Greetings, salutations. Welcome to this midday power surge, your spiritual oasis on this pilgrim journey as we are almost home. The second coming of Jesus Christ is even at the doors. Well, this is a special edition of Prophetic Insights where we analyze current events as they are fulfilling Bible prophecies. Before I get into the crux of the matter, I want to say this. During yesterday's midday power surge, I promised to share some links. I have not forgotten. I have received the inquiries, the requests. I'm still going to post those links. There's so much, so many links I need to share with you. And I do not want to confuse and give too much to prospective Seventh-day Adventist. So I'm weighing the matter properly, and then I'm going to post those links. Please stay tuned for that. All right? I haven't forgotten. Safe to Serve International, first time viewers, greetings. Welcome to this Midday Power Surge. Friends, let's get right into the crux of the matter. Yesterday was October 22nd. 2020, and as Bible-believing Christians, as Seventh-day Adventists, we look at that day as a memorial of October 22nd, 1844, the great day of antitypical day of atonement, day of investigative judgment, where Christ moved from the holy place of the heavenly sanctuary into the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Hear me very carefully. I do not believe that we should wait until October 22nd, 1999, October 22nd, 2015, October 22nd, 2019, one more, October 22nd, 2020, to make mention of the investigative judgment. Oh, no. This must be done every single day. I wonder why. Because every single day, we must think and speak of Jesus Christ. Which means every single day, we must talk about, think about, share what Christ's position is and what his work is. We're in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. This is present truth for every single day. Write this reference down. Great Controversy, page 488, confirms that every single day we must focus on the work and position of Christ in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. All right, friends, I believe that. Are these points clear? Let's move on. So this is a time of investigative judgment. I know many people don't believe that there is a pre-advent judgment. We covered that yesterday in part. Many folks don't believe that, but let me say this. You must take the word judgment and trace that word from Genesis to Revelation and every variation of the word, judge, judgeth, judging, judgment, and see what the Bible tells you. The Bible tells us that there is an investigative judgment before the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's clear. Just reference these scriptures. I'll start you off. Ready? Revelation 22, verse 11 and verse 12. And verse 14. Also write down Ecclesiastes, or I would say, the preacher, chapter 12, verse 13. Verse 14. One more scripture. Romans chapter 14, verse 10 and verse 12. Do you want one more? I'll give it to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 10, a pre-advent judgment. All right, friends. Let's go back in the ancient, the type, so we can better understand what Christ is doing and what my work should be, what your work should be. In this work of salvation, we must be co-workers, co-laborers with Jesus Christ. All right. In Leviticus chapter 16, 
The Bible tells us what Christ's work, the high priest's work is in the most holy place of the sanctuary. Verse number 30 says, his work is to cleanse us of all sins. What does that mean? The work of Christ is not only to forgive, justify, but is to give us power to surrender every known sin. Victory over all sin. That's perfection of character. Amen to that, friends. That's Christ's work. He cleanses. Our work is what then? What's our work? Verse 29 of Leviticus chapter 16 says, Our work is to afflict our souls, examine ourselves, seeing our need, and coming to Christ, surrendering, asking Him, for power not to return to sin. This is our work. We are told in the book, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet that sound. Amazing Grace, page 319 says, The part which man is required to sustain is immeasurably small. But in the plan of God for us, it is the part most needed. Christ, as I always say, has 99.99% of the work. We have a part to play. 0.01%. That is what Christ meant in John chapter 5 and verse number 17. My father worketh and I work also. It's co-laboring. Does it make sense? It's time to afflict our souls. And Leviticus 23 verse 27 to verse 29 says, Those who refuse to afflict their souls on the day of atonement would be cut off. Not that their sins would be cleansed and they would be saved. No. They would be cleansed, stripped, expunged from God's record and be lost. It's time to afflict our souls. Here's my point. I wonder if we as a people only have a theoretical understanding of the investigative judgment for those of us who believe it. If that is where it stops, we are hypocrites. We have to go beyond the mere theory. We need a practical experience as it relates to Christ's position and work in the heavenly sanctuary, the work of atonement, the work of investigative judgment. Who should afflict themselves? And how? Are you ready for this? Go to James chapter 4. Who should afflict their souls? And how? James chapter 4. The Bible says in verse number 4, You adulterers and adulteresses, know you not? My friends, God is calling adulterers and adulteresses to afflict their souls in this time of investigative judgment. Verse number 6 tells us grace is sufficient for us. Adulterers, adulteresses, meaning literal fornication and also spiritual mental fornication, lust, covetousness, coveting others who are not your wife nor your husband. Verse 7 gives us the how. Verse 7, submit yourselves therefore unto God. Christ now will give you power to resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's victory over sin. That's the how. Verse number 8. Draw nigh to God. Personal daily devotion. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Verse 9. Be afflicted and mourn. That's the word, friends. Afflict your souls. And notice, do you see the who and the how? Do you see it, friends? Who and the how? The who? Adulterers, adulteresses. Interestingly, what is the current event that is rife within our church right now? Prevalent on social media. I believe God in his providence is allowing the abominations of SDA leaders to be exposed. And based on how God worked and works, he generally works with the individual 
in, in his or her personal life. And when they are rebellious still, then he allows the sins to be exposed publicly to open shame. That's not God's work at first. So when we see this, it shows the individuals have been in the spirit of obstinacy. Look at this, my friends. And weep. This is AdventistToday.org, October 21st, 2020. Headline says, Mount Rubido. Pastors, plural, dismissed. Questions remain. Pastors, dismissed without explanation from the largest black church in southeastern California. Let's take a look at this right here, because two letters were posted. The dismissal of the two pastors, the senior pastor, Michael Kelly, and associate pastor, Rebecca Davis. Mm -hmm. Let's read on. The letters originally posted on social media have since been removed. Mount Rubido is the largest black church in the conference with around 1,700 members. There is the source. Last sentence. Michael Kelly was, according to one source, a quote-unquote celebrity pastor in the African-American community. I'm simply reporting what has been made public. There he is on the screen. On the church's Facebook page. And what was he addressing? That clip is about five seconds long. It's a meme. You could say it's a meme. The royal family part. The royal family part one. Everyone needs a divorce. And here is the other, my friends. Rebecca Davis. There it is on the screen. From the church's Facebook page. Now, these, these are the allegations. Now we have more than just allegations. This is from the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Southeastern California Conference, dated, a circle letter, dated October 18th, 2020. Dear Mount Rubido Congregation, and look at the three signatures from the President, Executive Secretary, and... Uh, Black Ministries, I guess, director. Three administrators' signat signatures. I wonder what this says here, friends. I wonder what this says. Take a look at that. The first paragraph. It is with heavy hearts that we, that we inform you. Pastor Michael Kelly is no longer employed by the Southeastern California Conference. Effective October 13th, 2020. This is a result of a thorough investigation and we feel this, this, this decision is imperative. Do you know what came to my mind, my friends, as I took a look at this? Is the scripture, note the scripture, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Let me fix that typo. 1 Corinthians Chapter 5, take a look at the screen now. It is with heavy hearts that we, not we, we inform you. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, the professed church members, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles. Now, my friends, I'm not conjecturing. I'm simply stating what members of the church have posted. Look at the next paragraph from the administrators of the Southeastern California Conference. So if you cry defamation of character, hmm. That, e that will not stick. I'm simply reporting what has been stated. Get to the screen. It is a practice of Southeastern California Conference to not comment publicly on personnel issues. We request that you respect the privacy of all persons impacted by this situation as we collectively pray for our community, church community at large. Let's fix that as well. 
Let's get back to the screen. As impacted by this situation, as we collectively pray for your church community. Take a look at this, my friends. This is from Fulcrum 7. Headline says, two pastors fired from large black church in Southeastern California Conference. Just take a look at this. This is what has been reported. The conversation on Twitter. And you can go to Twitter if you so choose. By those who attend the Mount Rubido Church indicate that the two pastors were inappropriately involved with each other hmm. resulting in an unwanted pregnancy not my words i'm simply reporting it we contacted listen keenly we contacted the mount rubido sda church via email for more information we have not received a response from them yet romans chapter 13 Look at what the Bible says, my friends, in Romans 13. Here's my point. I'm going to share with you about four or five scriptures. Let me slow it down right here. Because God is telling us something about the last days. The majority of the times when the Bible reports the sins of the flesh, do you know what sin heads the list? Adultery. I wonder why. And when you see a product a food item on the shelf in the grocery store you see the ingredients list normally the first ingredient is the one that is the largest in proportion in the mixture romans chapter 13. what does the bible say in verse number nine the first sin listed is adultery galatians chapter 5 and verse number 19, the first sin listed is what? Adultery. I wonder why. James chapter 2 and verse number 11, the first sin listed is what? Don't commit adultery. And that is the seventh commandment. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And what does the number seven represent in prophecy? I wonder what God is showing us from another perspective. What does seven mean? We are at the end. Let's move on. This is from Mount Rubido. One of the elders, pastors. This is a seven second clip. Listen. It is with great sadness that we announced that Michael Kelly and Rebecca Davis are no longer a part of the Mount Rubido pastoral team. Mm, mm, mm. All right, friends. And you could read all the Twitter posts. This is trending. From what I gather, three pastors were ousted as rapists. And another pastor, Kelly, was caught having an affair from his estranged wife not the first affair got the other woman who was also a pastor pregnant and then asked her to have an abortion he no longer has a job last sentence you could read that my friend promise her to marry her if she had an abortion and again you know i'm simply reporting it my friend and let me tell you something we are told and if you look at this carefully, friends, we are told that those of us who see these things and are quiet, friends, it's time to keep not silent. Volume 3, 281. If God ab abhors one sin above another for which his people are guilty, is doing nothing in the case of an emergency. Indifference, neutrality, in a religious crisis is what friends regarded by god as a grievous crime and equal to the worst type of hostility against god hmm. you know friends let me just say this as we take a look at this other segment of this midday power surge prophetic insights it's interesting it takes a while for these investigations to be done from the southeastern california conference think about that friends and they made this decision all right just think about that and secondly they're quick to fire those who should be terminated should be defrocked 
for if they're guilty should be what about those who are committing spiritual fornication with apostate protestants the daughter of babylon whores harlots and those who are in cahoots with popery what about those pastors what about those who are promoting the uh, the transgender elder sodomy in churches, sodomy in the schools on the West Coast, sodomy being practiced at Loma Linda, California. Where are the terminations? Fulfilling volume five testimonies. Page 14, what happened? I wonder why. I wonder why. It's the same pastors, Kelly and Rebecca Davis. Michael, who are also promoting the social gospel and trampling on the foot, the everlasting gospel, pointing to, oh, let us rise up against oppressors, and we should, in the right way, based on scripture, not the way how they're doing it. And yet, they have been found to be predators. Do you see it, my friends? I'm going to come to something else. They were the ones promoting going to support Black Panther. You remember Michael Kelly, Black Panther? Spiritualism, Halloween, Christmas, the whole works. You are seeing the fruit of such gospel. You're seeing it. You wait until tomorrow during our midday Sabbath service. I'm going to go in depth. Let me move on. This is October 22nd, 2020. God is allowing the apostasies, the grievous, gross, grotesque sins of SDA leaders to be uncovered, to be exposed in this time of judgment. And God has been working with these men and women before this time. Look at this. My friends, this is reality wives. From my observation, this is a secular source. I stand corrected if that's not the case. However, this was printed publicly. Headline, woman, may I add, a professed SDA woman, bravely sheer story of allegedly being groomed, assaulted, and raped by three SDA pastors. Since the Southeastern Conference, California Conference, did that to Pastor Kelly? I wonder what would happen here. Would there be a thorough investigation? What would be the end result? Take a look at this. This is Danielle Simmons. And friends, to me, a fact, I am reporting on this. You know what it means. You, you, you know what that means. Because some refuse to talk about these things. I wonder why. Look at this. Headline, she writes, trigger warning. And friend, you can go if you so choose to watch that video. I think one is 17 minutes. The other is about what, what, Hillary? 19 minutes? 21 minutes? All right. Thank you. And she said, these are the predators. From left to right, SDA pastors, Herman Davis and Marcellus Howard. There it is, my friends. Groom assaulted raped those are some strong allegations and she said that she has the receipts to prove it look at the screen my friends this was posted from the reality wives why samuel day jr host pastor top row first in line is hosting this and that was one of the catalysts and we also heard that Daniel Simmons also mentioned a third pastor, a Pastor Bates. What is God doing here, my friends? What is God doing here in this time of investigative judgment? You know, friends, during the 1,000 years in heaven, what would the saints, the saved be doing? Going over the records of those who are lost. It's going to be exposed, my friends, to the saved. Can we see now a type of what's going on now, friends? A type of it? That's what was printed. Woman brave the sheer story of allegedly being groomed, assaulted, and raped. 
It's by three SDA pastors. Again, I say, keep not silent, my friends. And these are the ones, many of them who are promoting the so-called social gospel. Yet these pastors are predators preying upon the vulnerable in the church. What more can be said? My friends, all of this happening in the time of the investigative judgment. And friends, we can see clearly, we can see clearly that we should not keep silent. Please write down 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 14. I cover this, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin again when the sins are listed adultery is listed first yes friends let me switch gears as i close now i'm going to say more on this i'm waiting for more i'm going to say more hold on right there also write down revelation chapter 2 and verse number 22 where the Bible speaks about Jezebel's adultery and fornication. Jezebel, the papacy, and her daughters. And as we see adultery, fornication, my friends, <laughs> happening in the church, what's going on in the world? The spiritual, we're seeing it, friends. Church and state union, we're seeing it. It's the close of the investigative judgment. The mark of the beast is near. Second coming of Christ is even at the doors. All in the context of the investigative judgment. We are told in Great Controversy, page 445, we shall see church influencing state to enforce Sunday rest by law. The church is... Uh, institutions sunder rest by law we shall see it my friends we shall see it i wonder are we seeing it take a look at this trump declares watch friends sunday a national day of prayer due to various crises listen who influenced him it was the churches listen well, look, there's, there's always been those who mock uh, prayer, who mock religion. But let the mockers mock, but let the people pray. Uh, this is a serious time. In fact, uh, I sent a letter last week to the president last Wednesday night uh, asking that he call a national day of prayer along with some other uh, evangelical leaders. And the president immediately said, yes, we need to do that. And, of course, this past Sunday, uh, he called the nation to pray. Mm -hmm. and, and so this is a time. And, friends, church influence the state listen again same point i do uh want to let you all know that that uh every couple of three weeks i have a uh, the opportunity to have a conference call with hundreds of pastors across uh the state of louisiana uh and uh last week we had s uh, such a call and received a request and i'm happy to honor today uh and and it's i know it's a little bit unusual but but uh, I think uh, it's it's something that's it's important at least for me and those people on the call and, and many other Louisianans. So I'm going to call for three days of fasting and prayer for. Mm. And notice here, friends, this is the most recent, October twentieth, two thousand and twenty. Franklin Graham now states he's calling for Sunday Sunday to be a day of fasting and prayer, starting when. Uh, this coming Sunday, October 25th. I wonder why. Due to the crises the nation is now facing. There it is, my friends. And notice now the words which are similar to the great controversy. Page 590. He says, it is only red words by God's hand that America will watch survive and be able to thrive again again means to be restored restored several worship events are happening what's the sole purpose blue words to bring america back that sounds like my friends 
a restoration. And what says Great Controversy, page 590? Sunday will be enacted by law. Right, my friends, for what purpose? To restore divine favor, restore temporal prosperity. Sunday to go against calamities. Sunday to go against pestilences and famine. And remember, my friends, once Sunday is enforced as the law of the land, do you know, do you know what happens, friends? Let me tell, tell you again. That is when we all have to make our final decision for Sunday or for God's Sabbath. Man-made commandment, commandments, and God's commandment, God's commandments. At that point, Christ now brings judgment to the living. Verdict upon the cases of the living. That's Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 and verse 10. If any man worship beast, image receive his mark, he receives the wrath. What is God's wrath? Seven last plagues. Then, second death, that's the verdict upon the living. That's what we are told in these three quotations. There it is. One, two, three. For the living, four. For the living, my friends. Let me close by saying this now. We have as a people, our influence in the world is diminishing. What's going to happen when the world hears this? Happening among Seventh-day Adventists, as I showed you, adultery, fornication, assault, rape in the church, and now we have the world looking on. Do you know what we're told in volume 9 and page 23? The world is watching Seventh-day Adventists. Thank you, Lord. The world is watching Seventh-day Adventists. It knows something of their profession of faith and high standards. And when it sees those not living up to its profession, it points to them with scorn. That's volume 9, page 23. It augments Romans chapter 2, verse number 22. You who preach a man should not commit adultery. Do you also commit adultery? Mercy. Verse number twenty. 24, for the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you. Through you. Keep not silence, my friends. Keep not silence. And what about the sin of abortion? Hmm. Pastor promoting abortion, as says the allegation, the report. And normally what they would do if a pastor was guilty, because Michael Kelly is not the first. There are several others. They simply move them to other locations, other regions of the church. And they lay low for several months, then they resurrect them. Why? They're in what they call fraternities. Not only in, in some brotherhood. Yes. In the church, secret societies. So don't be surprised. But my friends, I call for them to repent. Keep not silence for the victims. My friends, I'm going to close with this. I want to close with that. Because while we look at these reports, these allegations, and those that have been founded to be true, what about me? What about you? What about us? All right, Hillary. Hand me that volume four for me, please. Vo and hold that page. Thank you. In volume four, page 384, I close right here. The chapter entitled, The Judgment. Sister White begins to see a vision of the ledger of heaven. L-E-D-G-E-R. The, the ledger of heaven. The books are open. Daniel 7, verse 9, verse 10, 13, 14. Look at this now. Another book was open wherein were recorded the sins of those who profess the truth under the general heading of selfishness came every other sin. Selfishness. No wonder so many marriages are falling apart. Pride and selfishness. 
Go read early writings, page 119 on that point. Pride and selfishness and five minutes. 385, top paragraph. Under covetousness, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, thy neighbor's husband. And you call yourself a commandment keeper? If you offend in one point, you're guilty of all. You're not Sabbath keepers. Under covetousness came falsehood, theft. Am I guilty? Robbery. Are, you, are we guilty? Fraud, avarice. Under ambition came pride, extravagance. Hmm. In dress? You mean narcissism? Your frequent posts and what you post? <laughs> Jealousy stood at the head of malice, envy, and hatred. And intemperance headed a long list of fearful crimes. You see, friends, that type of music being played in those churches? Rational beings become so confused, they cannot be trusted to make right decisions. You think about that. The music selected messages book two, page 36. That worldly music, heavy beats, the carnival like church services, it leads to fornication, adultery. That's what we were told. One question. Sister White says, as it says also, animal passions. This same pastor was promoting. Let me stop right there. As I beheld, I was filled with inexpressible anguish and exclaimed, Who can be saved? Who will stand justified before God? Whose robes are spotless? Who are faultless? Revelation 14, 1 through 5, the 144,000. Who are faultless in the sight of a pure and holy God? Who? can be saved we need to examine our own selves my friends are these points clear yes i got more to say but hold on let me close who can be saved it's the same question the disciples asked christ in matthew 19 verse number 25 and verse number 26 who then can be saved do you know what christ's response was with man, all things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Friends, I don't want you to read my record. If you do that in heaven, during the 1,000 years, I am lost. I don't want to read your record. Because if I'm doing so, you're lost. I don't want to be exposed. It, it is it is sorely embarrassing to be publicly exposed. Yes, friends. Do you agree with that? So what must we do now? Surrender all to Christ. He's working with us. Don't be rebellious lest he is going to expose us. All right, friends. Send in your prayer requests. I'm going to pick this up on tomorrow's Sabbath. Father in heaven. We thank you for this midday power surge, prophetic insights. We pray for Daniel. We pray for the victims. We pray for the conversion of these predators, wolves in sheep's clothing. Every name that was mentioned, I won't recall them. Every name that was mentioned, we pray for their conversion. I pray for the members of these churches, not excluding Mount Rubido, to understand that the seed that has borne this fruit is a perverted gospel. While individuals must be held accountable, may they heed the warning. Save us, dear God, we pray, and prepare us for your Sabbath. Prepare us for your coming. Is our prayer. And be with others who are going through this. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. The protest, my friends, continues. Keep not silent, Maranatha.